you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy and buy and eat. Without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And you labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen. nations you do not know, and nations you do not know will come running to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. The Lord, how he may be found, call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord. And you will have mercy on them, and to our God, for you will be our God. Please join me in the common prayer. God, God you are my God. God. I should not have such hunger and thirst for God. So I will cross dry and weary essence. So here I am in the place of worship, eyes open. In your strength and glory, in your generous love, I am bringing you living at last. My lips bring you praises like fountains. I bless you every time I take a breath. My arms wave like banners of praise to you. I eat my fill of fine rib to pay for you. I stack my lips. But you have always stood up for me. I'm free to run in life. I hold on to you for your life, and you hold me steady as a post. I praise you, Jesus' name. I would invite the young disciples to come forward. It's so good to see you all here. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm excited to have the kids back. How about you guys? Let's give them a hand. You can come up if you want to. I know. <laughs> see, I told you, you're in your home. Know. Almost. Today, we're grateful to have you here in Morgan. I bet you all know what this is, don't you? It's a light bulb, that's right. And if I go like that, light comes out. Back in the day, how many of you know who Thomas Edison was? Do you? Yeah. Thomas Edison was the man who invented the light bulb. He had a good idea. And he had much invented the light bulb. But back then, it took a whole 24 hours, a whole day, to make one light bulb. And so his crew worked and worked and worked, and they put the light bulb together. And then Thomas Edison did something that they didn't expect him to do. You see, there was a young boy there, a young boy like one of you. And he said, this is got to go upstairs. You carry it. Oh, that little boy was scared. the stairs as careful as he could, and just as he got to the top, he tripped, and down the steps, and then broke all to pieces. So, Edison's team got 24 hours, a whole day's worth of hours, and they got it. There were 10. And then they 
saw Edison do something that they did not expect. That same little boy was still there, and he said, please take it upstairs for me. Can you imagine how scared that little boy must have been? But he took the light, and he went up the stairs carefully, and he got all the way to the top. You see, Thomas Edison believed in second chances. Second chances that we can be something different, something better. And in our story today, from the gospel, we're going to hear about a fig tree. A fig tree that was roughly about three years old and should be making figs. But when the owner came, it hadn't made any figs yet. Well, what in the world is wrong with that tree? Cut it down. We won't keep it. But the, the gardener said, oh, Master, please, let me keep it one more year. Let me give it a second chance. And I will put lots of manure around it. Otherwise, no one's fertilizer. Yeah. And we'll see if we can make it work. Now, we never know whether or not it does work. And if the next year, if he is able to keep it because it makes figs. But we do know, more than anything else, that God loves us. He loves us so much that he gives us not just one chance, not even just a second chance. He gives us chance after chance to find him and to love him back. Because he will love us no matter what. And we can shine like a light bulb. Today, I did actually got, I, I got the program to work somewhat. So I do have something for you to take back. I don't know what's going wrong with my program, but I gotta check it out because it doesn't want to print for me. But let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us second chances. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for loving us. And thank you for letting us love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Come get your papers. There's some coloring. There's some other things. There's, like I said, not the way. Whoops. I only need three more things. Thank you. Yeah. Have you got a good idea? No promises made. <laughs> Let us join with them in holy ground.
comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 13. For I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters, as some of them were, as it is written. The people <clears throat> sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 we should not test Christ, as some of them did, and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble, as some of them did, and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples, and were written down as warnings for us, on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 through 9. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with his sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? I tell you, no. But unless you repeat, repent, you too will all perish. Of those 18 who died when the tower in Salam Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, yard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I'm coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should we use it for soil? Why should it reuse up the soil? Sir, the man said, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. This is the word of God for the people of God. This morning, you've heard the stories of the fig tree that wasn't producing fruit. We've heard how Paul was telling the Corinthians that they better repent and change their ways. And we wonder, so what's it mean to us? So what does it mean? Hmm. You see, I believe in second chances. I believe in second chances because I am part of a group of people who are known as the people of the second chance. Those of us who take the time to, to go to AA or NA or OA or any of the anonymous groups are all, always told that we are the people of the second chance. And it's up to us to decide what we're going to do next. We could keep on doing what we have been doing, 
But guess what happens when you keep doing the same things over and over and over again? You keep getting the same results over and over and over again. So you have to look at how do we change so that we don't keep ending up in that same hole we started in. And we do that by that word called repentance. Now, lots of people say, well, I say I'm sorry all the time. I did too. I'm sorry I did that. I'm sorry I did this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Until people didn't believe me anymore. Until I realized that repentance doesn't mean saying I'm sorry and then going on the way. Repentance actually translates into I turn around and go the other way. So repentance says I turn around and I go towards Christ. Whoa, that's a whole lot of difference, isn't it? Than just, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you and I'm not going to do that again. And I'm turning to Christ to learn how to do it right. That's when our lives begin to change. You know, they say that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. When we turn to Christ, we turn away from insanity. Now, one of the, 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 the from Paul today, there, there's a pericope, they call it, that's a piece of scripture that I think is one of the biggest lies that we tell ourselves. It's the lie that says, God will never give me any more than I can handle. That's how we translate it, right? How many of you have ever said that? God will never give me more than I can handle. I can do that biggest lie we ever tell ourselves because God does allow things to come and overwhelm us sometimes. Believe me, when I was still using, there were days when I would have rather died than live. Was that more than I could handle? Uh-huh. I could ask some of my therapists and my doctors and everything else, but it was more than I could handle. But when I turned to Christ, Christ could handle anything. And that's what we, when we have challenges and temptations and things that happen in our lives, that's what God wants us to do. I have the answers to everything. And Lord knows I don't have the answers to a whole lot of anything. But when I turn to Christ, I have the answers. When I repent of my sins, when I repent of the things that I've done, when I repent, truly repent, and I turn around and go towards Christ, good and better things happen. Now, do I still have things come down on me that overwhelm me? You betcha. I don't think I never argue with my husband. I never argue with internet service. We won't go there. All of these different things. We all do it. It's common to humankind to get to that point where we say, ah, I can't do this. And God says, but I can. You see, with by ourselves, we can do nothing. Absolutely nothing. But with God, we can do all things. God tells us that in so many different scriptures, in, in Romans, in 1 Peter, and in, in all through the New Testament, Jesus has been telling us, you have the greatest helper of all. Because if you turn to Christ, Christ will be there for you. That's a pretty big gift, wouldn't you say? That's something pretty special in anyone's life. That's the most important thing that we can remember is no matter how hard something appears to us, if we go one tiny step at a time with Christ beside us, we can, we can attempt and accomplish anything. But it needs to be with 
our understanding that we're all sinners. Now, if I were to come in here and I was to say to you, oh, you sinners, I don't want to talk to you, you'd be pretty ornery with me, wouldn't you? But you see, we all are. The Bible tells us over and over and over again that we are all sinners. But when we repent of our sins and turn to Christ, we then start producing fruit. Like I said to the kids, we don't know whether or not the fig tree dealt with the fertilizer and grew and had figs the next year or not, but we can see ourselves what we can do. We repent of our sins, we turn around, we turn to Christ, our being changes. How many of you have ever known somebody that even though you think that they're supposed to be a Christian, remember last week we talked about being, just because you're sitting in church doesn't make you a Christian, but then we see them get a hold of something, a message, something comes through to them. A lot of times people will say to me, you know, what you said didn't make a whole lot of sense, but what you told the kids really stuck with me. And then we see that same person down the road, and they truly are living as Christians. They're loving their neighbors. They're loving God with all of their heart and soul and mind. And they're loving each of us the way we want to be loved. Huh? You see, every one of us has been given that chance. We've been given the book that helps us get there. We've been given the word of Christ. We've been given the word of the prophets. And all we have to do is follow. Now, does that sound like an easy job to do? Uh -huh. 